this uh, very free feed talking about the Batman this week. And then over on the Patreon, we're going to be releasing our latest episode of Was Next, talking about the January 8th edition, 2014 of NXT. Yeah, which uh, things change, things stay the same because we recorded this earlier today and it's from 2014 and we're talking about Baron Corbin in NXT. Yeah. I just can't avoid this guy in NXT. This is a uh, Baron Corbin heavy week for me. So uh, send your prayers. Thank you. Burn the ships. Burn the ships, <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah, patreon.com slash Poison Rana. Go check it out. We have a lot of shows. The Suicide Squad review up there. Best match ever, Sabu. And I know another pick coming in the next few weeks. Chris Leone's picked Midsummer, And that's a pretty good summer review as well. So uh, go check, check out our Patreon. It's how we keep the lights on. Yes. And sound on. <laughs> Sometimes. <laughs> uh, should we talk about some NXT now? Let's do it. NXT from June 13th, 2023. Live from the Capitol Wrestling Center. And uh, we open with a, a graphic. Uh, for the late Iron Sheik, who passed away last week. Um, we, right. we talked a little bit about uh, Iron Sheik on our Poison Rana show, which you can find every Sunday at 2. Um, but yeah, rest in peace, Iron Sheik. Yes, Bubba. Um, yeah, uh, and we open right away with Schism, Joe Gacy, Jagger Reed, and Rip Fowler taking on the team of Wesley, Mustafa Ali, and Tyler Bate. And the baby faces charge the ring right away. They're all hitting drop kicks and sending a uh, dyad out of the ring uh, where Gacy then attacks Bait, causing the bell to ring and the match to start. Uh, Bait hits a great looking diving, rolling uppercut to Gacy. And then Ali tags in and takes Gacy down with a Rana. Uh, Lee gets tagged in and hits uh, this slingshot rolling sit out sent on to Rip Fowler, which looked very nice. And then Dyad come back, hitting a double gun stun to Wesley. Uh, and now Schism just have Wesley isolated. They're quick tags. They're keeping them in the, his corner. Um, Wes goes for a slingshot sunset flip. Uh, but Rip Fowler is able to tag back in. Uh, Bait then gets tagged in. And the three baby faces hit a triple bop and bang. The fake out with the, uh, the like left jab there. Uh, all three then plunge her to the floor. Ali gets launched into the corner and uh, his momentum like drop kicks Gacy off the apron. Uh, Bates comes flying in with an uppercut and then Wesley hits his double knees off the top rope. There's a crescent kick from Jagger and then a leaping neck breaker from Ali uh, when Reed sends Ali face first into the corner. And this looked great, like the speed and the bounce yeah. of Ali here, uh, his face bouncing off that turnbuckle. Uh, there's then uh, Wesley's crazy con Hilo over the turnbuckle uh, to take the other two out on the floor. And Wes goes for the cardiac kick. Uh, but this was kind of weird. He sets up for for uh, Fowler and was nowhere near him very going close for this to kick. Um, I think they're trying to do that Fowler move, but he was like never in position for this thing. Uh, Wes then uh, runs into the rope and tags Tyler, uh, but the referee doesn't see it. And then Dyad pick up Wesley and throw him to Gacy for a sit-out powerbomb. It's one, it's two, and another referee slides in to stop the what? ref from counting three because Tyler Bate, sorry, Wesley isn't the legal man. Uh, Ali dies to the floor with a tornado DDT, and this is where Tyler Bate comes in as the legal man, hits the rebound lariat and the Tyler driver 97 to pick up the win. Of all the times a referee had to step in to tell another ref, hey, you missed this something. Non-championship six-man tag. We just needed uh, a proper finish. We needed the truth yeah. and justice between referees here. Of all the times to pick this Bizarre, spot. especially yeah. for uh, the story going on with Damon Kemp later in the show. We're oh, like, yeah. Why are we... Uh, it's... It was a bit odd to do this finish. This okay, because like later on, a referee will also like make a decision, and Vic calls out like, "Oh, the officials are on it tonight." So maybe that they're trying to like fix the problem from last week. Yeah, like because the Damon Kent lost because the thing. So like maybe kayfabe wise, that's the thing. But just so weird that like how many times in wrestling, how many times on this show do the ref not see something that another this this ref was watching this went no no no. The schism cannot win this not way. Not this way. Not this way. And decided to to step in there. So should they just have this guy, this one ref, stay there, watch the match the whole time? 
Well, I think that's what you need. You, you need, need a the second outside, referee rep all the time. You watch like video refs, you watch or... those fake sports where there's double refs and three refs, four refs. It is, it, it's weird whenever they do this, and it, and wrestling picks and chooses when you yeah. have like video replays sometimes. So but funny. The fact that this match with no real, yeah, okay, a bit of a grudge <laughs> match, but no real consequences to it. It's pretty funny. This is the one where no, not this way. Uh, but pretty hot opener with like we knew all these guys involved really i was gonna say the cool team of ali teaming with tyler Bate and wesley or tyler Brate as uh vic joseph likes to call him i think i don't Brate. know what he keeps calling him that i oh. noticed it a few times on the show uh but then also schism like i've been super into dyad ever since the like talks of them being not happy or asking for release and gacy he's just gotten in, in incredible shape so Really, I would run. I kind of want. I kind of wanted Schism to win so that we would just go back to this match again because I did like the like the the way all six of them kind of interacted. They're all really talented in ring dudes. Yeah, I I really enjoyed the match. I thought there were a few sort of mistime moments. I I kind of felt that throughout the whole show, all the matches seemed to have a little bit of clunkiness here and there. Uh, but still, like the um, especially like the babyface team, the flashiness of them really uh made this pretty enjoyable uh funky finish aside uh yeah good yeah. opener we uh move on where we see drew gulak and charlie dempsey uh giving like uh thea hale a bit of a bit of a talk down she won the battle royal last week but they said look you can't wrestle like you did last week she's like i won didn't i, I went no you got thrown into steps and you laid out for the whole match and then came back at the end cora jade will eat you alive tonight if you wrestle that way and uh thea wants to train right away she's like well let's go back training right now um they actually have some nice banter uh drew dempsey and thea here just polar opposite character wise and it works quite nicely this is the you want to lock it up yeah you know, it, they're doing the wedding crashes lock it up but lock it in it's you want to lock it in you want to lock it in you want to hit the gym right now uh duke hudson says that he has to go and grade papers so he won't be joining them for the training session tells them to leave and then calls andre chase and uh says i'm i'm looking for an update on your recovery i keep leaving these messages on your phone not hearing back from you but things around here are getting out of hand i think he means by drew and dempsey kind of taking over the school oh uh but yeah andre chase still uh they're using his name which means he's still in the company he's still there yeah that's the rule is yeah it if they say your name, if you're safe. If they just refer to you without your name. If they just look not. over to an empty space. Uh, ah, yeah. He's been through some things. That's what they used to say. So, uh, however, Andre Chase tweeted after this segment okay. aired with a gif. Missed call. Oops. With like side eye. Mm. So he's been avoiding Duke Hudson's calls. Clearly. Why? But he still is employed. So that's yeah. good. <laughs> yeah. Uh, build it. It's been a few weeks now, hasn't it? Like almost yeah. a couple of months. Maybe he's hurt since. or something. I'm not sure. So he got written off by Ron, Ron. didn't he? But, but this yeah. is the first confirmation he's actually alive. Yeah, he's actually in the company still. Yes. Uh, what if he's like, I've changed professions. I'm no longer running a, pro a university, and I don't know. He I'm got found out for this fake Ron. Yeah. yeah, someone finally with Tony D. You just <laughs> see him in one of those sketches with Tony. He's like, yeah fraud yeah he's the true criminal or or he's the he's off tv because he's in the witness protection program because he's the one who added to maybe TV. maybe uh bron breaker then comes out he's all dressed in black looks pretty good he's grown his beard out he yeah do the goatee thing anymore he's got he's got like some some real beard it's gonna get get bigger and bigger by yeah. this point but I, i'm loving the bron breaker all black all man in black and i love the dog's sound effect in, in the beginning of his entrance entrance it's cool uh, during his entrance, uh, the crowd are all singing Seth Rollins' theme along with the the dog barking. That's right. Um, and uh, Bron says, last week I took out the biggest superstar from Europe and called out the biggest superstar on Raw. And it's all about accountability. No one just uh, gets to just say and do what they want. Dragunov didn't look like the best when I speared him through the concrete. And Seth is a visionary and can do anything until he locked eyes with the meaner than evil Ron Breaker. So where is he? Where is this workhorse champion? I don't see him. And this is where Dragunov storms to the ring and is being held back by security and referees. 
and break it's that it. one ref who's just like, no, we have to have yeah. <laughs> Justin. <laughs> Don't let these wrestlers yeah, fight. Yeah, no, stop. <laughs> um, Breaker says that Ilya's not on his level and he needs to get out of here. So get him out of here. And everyone is going to be held accountable from this moment forwards. And that's when Seth Rollins appears on the screen <laughs> holding his WWE World Heavyweight I, title. I don't know if he laughed, but I just assume he did. He started singing Bron's name. He was like, Bron, Bronny, Bron, Bron. Right. He's, he's like Jared Leto's Joker. Yeah. And he says, you think if you say my name three times fast, I'll appear and defend my title? That's not how things work around here. But I like your ap approach. It's bold. So you want to be that guy... Uh, it would be kind of nice to go back to where it all started. So, Bron Breaker, challenge accepted. And it's confirmed that next week, we're getting Bron Breaker versus Seth Rollins for the WWE World Heavyweight title. Book it. Make the switch. Make this, make this kid on Tuesday night on NXT beat Seth Rollins. Yeah, this is pretty cool. It was pretty cool when Bron just randomly called him out at the end of the show. It definitely gave a little edge to people to entice people to watch i think we were kind of at the end the assumption that it was just going to be the match but as soon as the show started there actually all week there was no talk of it so i assumed like no it's not actually happening it's just going to him calling him out and that's exactly what this was so now you know they have time to, to hype it up for a whole week that the match is next week. i imagine there'll be a lot of uh like commercials on smackdown this week to hype it up and yeah. more i would imagine seth probably talks about and, bron and he's defending it is he not like he's got a match well he's got obviously a, some i'm assuming he's defending it against finn at money in the bank or something or wait yeah I think something like that yeah uh some people in the chat saying he's got an open challenge on monday as well so maybe he's just defending the title yeah all around uh but that's cool i i'd be really interested to see how next week's ratings does for nxt because see how much of a draw seth is i imagine you will get a lot more eyes than usual on this thing for sure anytime someone from like raw coming down if you promote it like this like hey he's a champion and he's putting it like that it should do yeah. pretty well i don't know if i think all the sports are done on tuesdays maybe hockey yeah, getting hockey is the only thing really left yeah. uh baseball's early but yeah uh, not not the same but no. yeah so that that should be like a huge thing we'll later learn that they turn it into a special two week specials apparently i i uh saw a toronto raptor yesterday at rapper which toronto raptor uh what was his name um i i can't really remember Ka Ka uh, not cool he's uh <laughs> banton the underscore dover don on twitter yeah okay pa apparently i met him last night oh nice according to my friend <laughs> amazing so that was cool uh but yeah sports done yeah pretty so much. so it should be pretty good uh it's cool that they're bringing these guys back and forth like obviously i'm joking that it'd be way more interesting if braun won i don't think that's the case but fuck it we'll support it we'll be behind it but like having him do this kind of thing i would imagine he eventually exits nxt pretty soon like after the next i few. think so and you also wonder like you've heard in the past i know Sean Waltman used to be the guy that they'd put people against him and be like, what do you yeah. think? Is he good? Can he go? Yeah. I can imagine that kind of being like that with Seth. Seth Rollins is obviously very high up in the company, probably has a bit of a say with, you know, what he does and people he likes to work with. And if he can give, like, Seth a good match next week, I, I can do so totally see that thing being like, yeah, he's good. This kid's good. He he definitely is like the measuring stick of, of so. WWE. Absolutely. Like bring Cody in. That's the first feud you go to. You hear everyone in, outside WWE say Osprey saying Seth is the guy that mm. you would face. Right. For me, Seth will never be the guy. That's why he got he was gifted this mm. runner up title. I know he's super over and the theme and the, the whole thing. I still don't know what his character is supposed to be. Mm. He's, he's supposed to, he acts like the Joker. Mm. And that's just something like so many wrestlers do. Yeah. So to me, I still can't, I can tell you who Braun Breaker is mm. more than I can tell you who Seth. And I've been watching Seth for like 15 years. Yeah. So it's like, I still don't know what your character is. I like that Seth is trying different things and wears the elaborate outfits and like tries those things. It makes him way more interesting because his wrestling is what's yeah. interesting to me. Like he really is one of the best, if not the best worker in WWE. So this match sounds great. We were joking about if it happened tonight that we're getting the, what, like the stomp into the spear counters yeah. and all these things. Like the match should be awesome. And I imagine it's Dragonov who 
kind of costs him the, the title. I would think so. I yeah. would think so, especially after tonight's main event. Although, if he keeps growing that heel beard, maybe he'll be a champion again soon. We uh, go to a video for Dana Brooke. Uh, it's showing highlights all from her career in WWE, starting with a signing to NXT, showing her like partnership with Emma, uh, then going when she used to call herself the Total Diva. The total Diva. Uh, up to her being on Raw, um, WrestleMania, her run with the 24-7 Championship, kind of just, in a nutshell, the whole career of Dana Brooke. A lot of her doing that entrance where she, like, flips the and then flexes. Pose, yeah. Yeah. Flex appeal. Uh, she's then interviewed by Mackenzie Mitchell, who asks, uh, how long are you going to be here? And Dana says, well, I'll be here as long as you'll have me. And I will work on Raw, SmackDown, NXT, Level Up. I just want to be in that ring. I love being in that ring. And I've made a career of making lemonade out of lemons. Um, and I've busted my ass and therefore I'm back here. And that's when Cora Jade interrupts her. And uh, Cora says that she deserves to be number one contender. And it's Dana Brooks' uh, fault that she's not. And Dana says, the only thing that costs you is your sense of entitlement. So oh. Cora slaps her across the face and leaves. Dana Brooke sounding good. I, like years of doing this, she sounds so comfortable. And I liked that they showcased her like NXT like mm. history here, kind of reminding you, hey, actually, she is from here too, especially just seeing the Seth yeah. segment and then like later on. And it's like, hey, uh, why not have her down here and help get over some other people and use her in storyline? This is like a perfect storyline to just have her in right now. Yeah, I didn't see any of that. Uh, you know, she was basically facing Sarah Logan on main event like every week a year or so ago. And everyone was like, oh, Dana Brooks kind of right, yeah. improved. So I, I'd be interested to see how she does here in NXT. Love me some Dana Brooke. We uh, go to the locker room where Wesley, Mustafa Ali and Tyler Bate are celebrating their win. And Wes says, yeah, but you know what? If it wasn't for that ref, it could have been a lot different. And Ali says, what we need to focus on now is a match between you two. And we can't be having moments like tonight where it was down to the ref. We need a clear and decisive winner between you two. So what if I'm the special guest referee? And Ali says, uh, and then they agree. They're like, yeah, that sounds great. Have you as the special guest ref? And then Ali asks, where are we going to party tonight then, guys? And Bates suggests a cute vegan place he knows. Wesley says he's down as long as Bates paying for it. And Ali just looks disgusted at the thought of going to a vegan place. They all look like they enjoy vegan. They all look vegan. They're like in fantastic shape. They probably yeah. eat vegan every single night. Uh, yeah. So what's going on here? Ali is offering to be the peacekeeper. Who's turning on who? It's like Someone. something's happening. Yeah, something's it? awry. I, I still feel it might be Tyler Bate who... He's vegan. He's who obviously the heel. Dirty. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. He's Never... poisoning them tonight. I don't trust any... <laughs> With that food. Yeah, I don't trust vegans. Food. Come on. <laughs> yeah. You, got, you want some... What is it? Foam? Yeah. You want some moss? <laughs> vegan food is pretty good but that's, that's great vegan food yeah. yeah the way the way vegan food is always used in media to be like someone's always disgusted by it is, is i can't believe it's still a yeah. thing considering like how many vegan places there are at least in our city but like it's always an easy easy thing to go after saying this guy's vegan so is ali helping bait win oh you think they both turn it doesn't make sense then i, guess. I mean i i think i i feel like one of these guys they're all two just nice and annoying, aren't they? I just the didn't like Ali's recent heel run where he was like a, that annoying dude. But he's not that character all, now. But... All his heel runs haven't been great, yeah. in my opinion. I don't... He always is given just like a whinging character. I, I don't and, like it. But Bate... And I think, I think when you think back to those things, he, he made himself those videos of him like in Chicago talking about being a cop and all that. Like he's a natural baby face in my mind. Yeah. But uh, yeah. Is he not so it's gonna be shenanigans he, he's not just gonna be a a ref is he he's like hey i'll be the ref to make sure things are even when all we're doing right now in nxt is having the refs do the best shit yeah be on their game so this guy's gonna mess up and bait's gonna cheat without him seeing and he's gonna call it and then wes is gonna be like you costed me i don't know yeah, eventually if, if we're gonna be fair would you like a an impartial fully trained referee who's been doing it for years or this guy with great hair. Yeah, <laughs> this wrestler dude. 
I mean, so it's next week, and again, they're they're they'll tell us about this whole two week gold rush thing, mm. but maybe this sets up for a triple threat the week after. I think, yeah, I think we'll get combinations of all the singles, yeah. and maybe a triple threat down okay. the line. Cool. We go to our me- next match: Thea Hale taking on Cora Jade, uh, and Cora's just mocking Thea at the beginning, and Thea shoves her down. Cora gets right back up and throws Thea down and points and laughs at her. Uh, Thea goes for, they're running the ropes, Thea goes for a leapfrog, and Cora kind of holds up, causing Thea to just fall on the ground. This is where Dana Brooke comes out. Uh, Thea then, uh, they're trading these wrist locks, and Thea rolls and flips out of one, and then it looks like she was going for, you know, where you, you grab the hand and you run up, up the ropes. It looked like she was doing that, but then instead held onto the corner and did this front flip kick thing to break out of the hold looked unique um horror then comes back with an elbow to the back of the head for a two count it felt like they were maybe a bit out of position at this bit uh there's a step up in zaguri followed by the double stomp to the back of hail uh thea hits a suplex followed by her rolling senton and then the springboard coffin drop which i think vic identified as boing boing she's calling it boing 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 Boing! Which kind of suits her, I guess. Boing! Uh, she goes for the suicide dive, but Cora, like, smacks her in the face as she's doing it. Again, the timing was a little off here. Cora then turns and punches Dana Brooke, goes to use the kendo stick, and the ref stops it. And as the ref's pulling the kendo stick away, Dana shoves Cora into the steps, rolls her back into the ring, and this allows Thea Hale to lock in the, the Kimura lock with the legs wrapped around the waist and gets the tap out victory over Cora Jade. So does she have a name for this Kimura lock? <laughs> they just called it a Kimura lock. She got the, the I, was it the boing or the kaboing? Either way, this Either that way. move is a funny name. Uh, I love that Thea Hill has learned some submissions from yeah. hanging out with the Drew Gulak and because it, what's the, the Gulak? Oh, that's the dragon sleeper. Mm. Right, right. Which Ivy does. So yeah, yeah. Uh, this is like, it, the match was not good. I, I'm I'm definitely broken record, but Cora Jade just like regressing for me. I, I don't like the character. I don't like any of her matches. And mm. this one was definitely one of them. But the story, I guess, is Thea and she's getting this big opportunity. I've been loving her character. Like talking about lemonade out of lemons, like her character has been you're the like scrappy do. And mm. look how like it's slowly like becoming fan favorites legit. Like the crowd are always behind last week, like the whole universe is behind her. So even in this match, like her winning is like great. And then now you're twisting in and rippling in the Dempsey Gulak Duke grading papers and possibly Andre chase coming back. So it's also, it's like, they're all fighting over the, t- it's like what AEW was doing. It's like, Hey, wait, we all want this guy in our thing. Cause we see like good yeah. things in this person. So Thea Hale could be the youngest NXT women's champion next could week be. if she beats Tiff. Yeah, I I thought Thea was off on a lot in this match. Uh, her timing, her positioning wasn't great. Like, she did a couple of nice looking things. Uh, I think she's got her character down. Uh, there's still a lot of work to be done uh, in ring, in, in my opinion. I'd say for both. Uh, like, it's developmental, so hey, you know. Yeah, Cora, Cora it's more her character not clicking with me. I've seen... At, like I felt during her babyface run, she was having really way good better matches. matches. Um, I don't think here it helped uh, being against Thea Hale because yeah, there was there were a lot of times where Thea was just completely in the wrong position. Tell me a like, tell me a move Cora Jade does that's not the DDT. Like yeah. I can't remember her matches. Her move is I go get the stick thing. Yeah. That why are you using that thing again? Okay, yeah. Like every match is I, I cannot remember it once it ends and then thankful for that today but didn't really like this one i i don't know where you go with her i was I, like it's a position you'd f- think she's still kind of high up losing here well, she's like, got the dana brook yeah food. true and so, i'm sure she beats dana i would think so yeah maybe, yeah maybe who knows we then uh get a the video explaining the rules for the heritage cup and we see nathan fraser heading out to the ring but noam dar is on crutches oh no this is then where we get the announcement that uh, we're getting a two-week NXT gold rush. Um, and the first two matches they announce is next week, Ron Breaker versus Seth Rollins for the World Heavyweight title. And the week after will be Carmelo Hayes defending the NXT championship against the winner 
of Baron Corbin and Ilya Dragunov. Yeah, Gold Rush. They got some weird Gold Rush music playing every time they brought it up. This is a throwback mm -hmm. to the original NXT Gold Rush tournament with Seth Rollins being the inaugural. Seth Jinder. That's right. If you want to hear us talk about it, listen to Was Next deep in the archives on our on our Patreon there for Was Next. But yeah, the Gold Rush was the original NXT title tournament. So now they're bringing it back two weeks in a row with, for starters, next week's pretty stacked. And I could imagine the week after already kind of lining up what it's going to look like also pretty stacked. So the next two weeks of NXT are definitely like kind of must watch, especially next week with Seth and Braun. But I'm kind of liking the little nod to the history there yeah. of the old school NXT. Noam Dar comes out with metaphor and uh, <laughs> says he's on the crutches because of this snake, referring to Nathan Fraser. He says he knew he couldn't beat me, so he brutally attacked me in the car park. Oh. And uh, which I kind of like because everyone gets attacked <laughs> in the car park. So he's like, it happened to in. me. It happened to me. Um, Dar says that instead, Oro Mensa will defend his honor and his cup against Fraser. Uh, so yeah, the the Heritage Cup is on the line, but Oro Mensa defending on behalf of Noam Dar. My man Mensa is. Is Dar, like, I know storyline, he's he's faking it, but, like, is he legit hurt? Because this was weird. I don't know. This this was weird. I know they did some loops, right, like, this weekend. So, like, I don't know if he wrestled. I could, as we're recording this, we're recording this right after NXT. I couldn't find anything really confirming or denying. I'm sure maybe in a day, by the time you listen to this, things have come out. But the way Vic Joseph talked about it on commentary made me think it was a work. But then the match ended, and well, spoilers, he he loses this yeah, cup, so Yeah, I mean they like storyline you can work like they've worked injuries before, you know? Yeah. Like Sol Ruka is legit injured and they just use Blair Davenport taking her out. Obviously, this is the character of Noam Dar going, Oh, I'm hurt. I'm hurt. And we're meant to believe he's not and just trying to get out the match. But But <laughs> loses. But like why like why would you do that? Like, I, I don't understand his character's justification of getting out of the match. And if he is legit, uh, like, I, d I found this very odd. It's very weird. It, it didn't make sense. Like, the match was cool. If you, we'll get into it, I guess. Yeah, so uh, it's the rounds formula. Uh, Mensa goes for a springboard right away, but Fraser moves and lands on his feet. Uh, Fraser then moonsaults over his head and then uh, catches, um, sorry, uh, Fraser catches Mensa with a roll up to win the first fall in the first round. Uh, both go to their corners, and then as the bell rings for the second round, Mensa just charges at Fraser, attacking him. He's got a lot more aggression here. Hits a snap suplex for a near fall, uh, and then this kick to the side of the head from Mensa, and then the rolling kick. And this is where uh, Jakara Jackson gets on the apron to distract, and Lash Legend holds. Fraser in the corner, allowing Mensa to come at him with that spinning, rolling heel kick in the corner um, to get the second fall. So one, you know that it's... running kick in everyone in NXT does. Yeah, it used to be that running knee in NXT that everyone did. Now it's the running, it's the kick. rolling kick. Yeah, running kick. Uh, after the break, uh, there's a moonsault into the reverse DDT from Fraser, but Mensa scouts it. Mensa then goes for a moonsault of his own and gets super kicked midair. And this, they're doing the the clock is like right, like at the five second mark. And I'm pretty sure Fraser goes for the pin, and it's meant to go like three, two, two one, one two, and like three, the yeah. one, two, like so the bell yeah. goes before the three count, but they mistime it. So Mensa kicks out <laughs> like right at the last millisecond because yeah. he's like, oh shit, this isn't gonna work. Uh, so. If that was a missed time, good on Mensa for like clocking that because that can't be easy timing. And you know, seeing it, knowing it, either. everything. Yeah. Uh, so we then go to the fourth round. There's a Phoenix splash attempt from Fraser, but he rolls through, and then Mensa hits the alley oop. Yeah. Shout out, Big Show. Was he? What did he try to do this? Because he hits this and then goes for another power bomb spot that gets countered. But the alley oop, where Big Show used to do it, right? The power bomb, and then you throw him over yeah. like face first. Like no one does this move. It doesn't really. Make makes sense unless you literally do it fast enough to make that impact or you're seven foot tall where you're just yeah, dumping you're launching them first. yeah yeah he made it look oh, all right look yeah. good. uh there's then a super kick from fraser and mensa kicks out 
Uh, they're fighting on the top. There's an avalanche German suplex from Mensa, which just flips Fraser over uh, for a near fall. And this is when Ulyssa Leon and Valentina for Royce run out to take out Jakara and Lash Legend. Um, did I, have I forgotten something? Yeah, they <laughs> had beef from the Battle Royal last week. Oh, the one I slept through? Yeah. Okay, yeah, yeah, right. Yeah, right. Okay, yeah. so yeah. That, that, that makes sense, yeah. <laughs> There's then a Phoenix splash from Fraser and picks up the win, defeating Oro Mensa <laughs> and Noam Dar, I guess. Kind of. And new. And new. Um, there was some cool stuff in this match. Again, like kind of all the match. There was a few sort of... I thought mistimed things and slightly out of position and yeah, uh, which took me out of it a little bit. And especially with this like stop start round formula, I, I know it's TV, so you're going to have to have commercials through things anyway, but it seems even weirder when you've got, you come back from commercials for 30 seconds left of a match before it's the end of that round. And we're taking 30 seconds more before we're going into it. So it's like, do this in all one big block. If you're going to yeah. Or like, or do, yeah, do a longer break in the commercial, sure. you know, yeah, like true, that kind yeah. of thing. It's... Yeah, I, I'm, I'm like not so in, I, I, was, I used to not like the rounds matches. I really like the one that we saw at the last PLE with Noam Dar. D- Dar's been great. I'm like just bummed that he's hurt or whatever the storyline, like if he's legit hurt, which I'm imagining he legit is, because after the match, he cries that he lost his title to, to Lash Legend. But like, so if he's hurt now, I guess that puts a little bit of a freeze on this whole metaphor thing. Cause I guess that changes all the plans. So they decided to, this is how we get the cup over mm. to someone else. That just makes the most sense. The match itself was just okay. Mensa actually did do him some impressive stuff. Like he has not been doing much here, but it's the most we've really seen. From yeah. Him, like allowing him to tie it up with someone who's just in, insanely fast and talented, Nathan Frazier, like he mi- mi- mixed really well. I would just like to see a normal match between the two over this, but uh, you I know, don't, I don't think this is a legit injury. It's this makes no sense storyline line wise to me, and I think it takes the this moment away from Nathan Fraser a bit. Yeah, it's just weird. Yeah, you know, didn't, like, didn't yeah, they're not, like, didn't feel legit. Are they really wanting to protect Noam Dar that yeah. much, or is it? Or maybe it is. Maybe Dar is someone they want for Mello down the line, and this is a way of getting it off of him, but. Like, it's it's WWE. They're not overly protective of a lot of these guys' wins-loss records or anything. So it just it just felt really odd. You, yeah. could, you could have had this match not for the title and just as a stand-in and then That's actually what... get the match yeah. down the line. That's what makes me think it's legit because, like, okay, well, how do we get this off of him now? Yeah. Make Mensa do it. So either way, uh, kind of bummed about Noam, but maybe uh, we'll still be seeing him on TV. Or maybe it is a, a farce, and he's like, actually... Uh, but he didn't attack him afterwards. There was nothing. He just cried. And yeah. went, oh, I lost it. So, bizarre. Especially when you've just formed this... You just formed unit. them last week, so it does suck if it's legit, because it's like, oh. So it, the only reasonable outcome is it's legit. And I think if, if you are doing, um, like, if it is legit, I think it, you get more value keeping it on Mensa for a little bit defending it regularly in his honor it would get Mensa up and then when Fraser beats him it actually means something well Dragon Lee wants Mensa it too to beat nobody for yeah for this time who else oh Dragon Lee lost though so I mean Dragon I don't Lee know. had his chance yeah yeah, yeah. Dude, a, a shame because Dar was just getting on my like like favorite to watch on this show and it's like ah man but maybe I mean, we think- do, do you can still do his talk show yeah uh gulak and dempsey i think would they be should be in that division. yeah they should be in there seeing that we've had a lot of main roster people coming down is there anyone from the main roster you could see coming into this sort of who's division? who's like rounds wrestling yeah that's what i'm trying to say there any british people on wwe right now probably no. pete dunn butch yeah. butch yeah maybe yeah we get a video for lyra valkyria she's talking about her loss to tiffany stratton but says how she will learn from these defeats and keep evolving as she channels the spirit of the morrigan channel the spirit of the morrigan (laughs) we go back to the women's locker room where jc jane's been watching this and quite rightly she's like what the fuck is this bird (laughs) shit like she lost she lost what's she talking about bird lady and who does she think she is and electra lopez goes well you know what i think she's pretty impressive jc says well you would say that because she eliminated you last week. 
And this is where Lola Vice comes in and says, yeah, well, Lyra eliminated you too, JC. And JC don't yeah. Yeah. Storms off. And Lola Vice says to Electra Lopez, I don't like many people around here, but I like you and we should stay together. So forming a bit of a, a tag team for this NXT without a tag team champion. Yeah, no one told them that this was the week we're losing. Yeah, the bad NXT. idea. We go for singles gold, girls. Uh, I do like the fact that Lola going under the wing with Electra Lopez. Lola like has a lot of like steam coming behind her. A lot, like the crowd, you could hear them audibly loud during mm. the segment chanting for her. And I mean, I I like many of them in the crowd last week when she was eliminated. We're pretty upset. So. I do want to see more of her, and they're definitely going to try to keep her protected and treat her like a big deal down the line. She Was she not the MMA fighter I think beforehand? So, yeah. I know a lot of people, when she signed, were messaging us like, oh, I, I follow her work, and oh, she's hot. You got to follow her. So like, I know they're trying to keep her as a protected big deal. So team her with Electra Lopez, who's doing nothing down here. Yeah, not like, into Valentina. Dude, really? Which, actually, that was that could have been something. That kind of just she could have just managed them and gotten them like a bit yeah. of an edge. But anyways, yeah. We go backstage to Von Wagner and Mr. Stone. Here we go. And Stone says, Wagner, you've been seeing the therapist a lot. And he goes, Yeah, well, she's getting a lot out of me. Hey -o. Um yeah, like he only met this therapist last week. Normally people go like once a week. Once every two weeks, he's gone every day. It sounds like it's Big Von Therapy. Summer. That's a lot of money. Homeboy season, hot Homeboy hot boy season. Summer for Big Von. Uh, this is where Dijak comes in. He he walks by. He takes off his sunglasses at night because he remembers what Von said to him <laughs> months ago, and then goes, Stone, you should be with a real winner, not this loser. And then Von's like, What did you just say? And then Dijak like, Yeah, you heard me. And then Dijak. Puts on his sunglasses again to leave. So we're getting Dijak Wagner down the road. Uh, Stone asks, so what have you been talking about? Have you talked to her about the picture of you as a weird baby? <laughs> and Wagner's like, no, I haven't talked about that yet. Stone says, you've got to. Who are you going to trust? Who are you going to trust, Von? Who are you going to trust? Your mum? Your friends? Your girlfriends? Who are you going to trust? Von goes, you. It's I always you. been you. <laughs> continuing these film quotes that these two seem to do every week it's you, you. it's you, always been you you had me at weird baby photos yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so and stone looks happy about it it's like i've got through to this guy with a tear in my eye watching this was my highlight of nxt this week was just these two having a moment as shocked as stone acted i was as shocked i audibly gasped <gasps> he said he he said you. He said he trusts him. They're friends. Wow. Look, Vaughn just needed to get laid to become happier again. And that kind of just shows... What do you mean get laid? He's going to therapy. Well, he was making jokes about... Come on. <laughs> it's come, come Tuesday on. every come Tuesday. We know, how, we know how big Vaughn works. <laughs> uh, yeah, so we got to see Vaughn just destroy Dijak. I, I want, like, this This guy could be a world champion again now. <laughs> like, Are we now, back to now, Vaughn? Yeah. We're back on team. And we're back. We're so back, baby. Vaughn, we're so back. I think he's doing great in these scenes. They're absolutely ridiculous, but it's the most interesting he's been. Like, you show, enjoying it. you show this to someone who hasn't watched NXT, like, in years or a year or just ever, they wouldn't know what this is. They would not like this. But because we've watched this guy go camping in the woods with Kyle... And now he's found another friend yeah. that they're just out there and they're loving it That's and they complete time. each other. And I love it. So move over golden lovers. <laughs> it needs to be another, we need to talk about this photo and it's just him and Kyle in the woods. <laughs> the we need to talk about this photo. <laughs> what went on with you and Kyle in the fucking woods? <laughs> uh, I don't know, man. I gave him a beer and things got weird. <laughs> we go to our next match. It's as my autocorrect has put Abba Kato. I wish that'd be sick. Abacado with an Abba gimmick? That's comes fantastic. Out. <laughs> Lay all your love. Yeah. <laughs> give, give me, give me, give me. Give me, give me. Give me. Into the ring. <laughs> give me another victim after midnight. He's taking on, uh, it's a handicap match, taking on Axiom and Scripts. Oh, I thought these were the Power Rangers with their outfits here. Matching gold and white, white Rangers. Gold. Yeah, white Ranger like. yeah. They needed woods with them as well. Yeah, Angel Grove. Yeah. Um, Axiom and Scripts double team uh, Kato before the bell rings. 
Uh, and the, the bell rings and Kato just lariats Axiom, turning him inside out. Scripps jumps off the top rope and just gets squatted, sorry, swatted out of midair. He throws Axiom against Scripps. Uh, Dabba Kato picks them both up, uh, drops Scripps and just boots him in the head. Uh, throws Axiom around, uh, goes for a choke slam to Axiom, who slips, who flips out of it, makes a tag to Scripps, who hits this rolling kick, which sends Kato out the ring. And now both keep running, hitting Tope Suicidas against uh, Dabba Kato to try and knock him down. And then Axiom hits this, like, kind of monkey flip on Scripps in the ring, which sends him out of the ring for, like, a conhilo, which looked very, yeah, Different. Yeah, very Cirque du Soleil Lucha style yeah. where Axiom launches, he uses wrist control, la launches Reggie here, who just barely, his head just barely missed it. It's hard apron. launching over oh, the rope man. from like the mat. It's pretty tough. And then Axiom gets up and hits like an Asai moonsault to the outside as well, like just nonstop attacking this guy. It's the moonsault to the floor, rolls Kato into the ring, hits the moonsault in the ring, and follows up with the golden ratio. And Axiom pins Dabba Kato. Yeah, like it took two of them, which is kind of backwards for the two baby faces to yeah. beat up the one bad guy. But it did make sense because this guy is the size of like both of them on each other's shoulders, essentially. But I hated this. Like I, there were some cool, like, cool spots, cool but... stuff between, with like Axiom and scripts. But this makes no sense to me. It's two guys against one. The two guys were meant to be the baby faces. Jump the guy before the bell even rings. Who does this serve? Like, Axiom Scripps beating Dabba Kato? It's like, yeah, well, it took two of you. Or if you have Dabba Kato win, it makes the other two look like yeah, jobbers. It's just, so yeah. So I yeah. don't, I hate when they book these kind of matches. Uh, it didn't really do anything for anyone, I thought. Um, I like the idea of Axiom and Scripps as a tag team and wouldn't mind seeing them mix it up with some of the other teams. For sure. Uh, but this did nothing for no one. I didn't think. Yeah, it's like, well, now what do we do with Dabba, who was like Abacado? <laughs> like now you you can't you just got beat by these two like acrobat dudes. Yeah. So like, it's yeah. kind of back to the drawing board with this guy. So yeah, it kind of is. I don't know what you do with him next. Uh, Heritage Cup Abacado. <laughs> yeah, uh, Dabba. Sorry, Abacado the musical. Yeah. Go yeah, with it. Sounds great. I mean, we go to we go to Demand Lucha all the time. They got uh Freddie, Freddie Mercurino. Mercurio. So you could have die. <laughs> you could have the Avocado and yeah. Freddie Mercurino. <laughs> Who'd be in his band? There'd be one more, it, right? It would have to be all giants. Be like Freddie's not that big, but he's turn into sheer into into share. They have share gimmick going on. <laughs> Tell me, do you believe? <laughs> <laughs> Are we finishing Forbidden Ball with yeah, that song yeah, again? Yeah, I think yeah. we kind of have to. <laughs> yeah. There's a take. No one knows what we're talking about right now. So we're doing Forbidden Poor and we're doing like this wrestling karaoke party, but we did a dynamite, Toronto dynamite after party where we did wrestling karaoke. So everyone's just singing wrestling karaoke all night. But then we're like, hey, we got time for one more song. And someone goes, yo, sing share do you believe in life after love and we're everyone just, we're just like what what uh fuck it all right okay so we all just sang share and we're like wow that should just be the song we end with our wrestling karaoke every time so yeah, yeah now you're in the share no matter how hard i try <laughs> be pretty lit actually yeah. that make that makes all of these characters way more interesting I'm just picturing like yeah beer singing to, to fear but it's like you keep pushing me aside <laughs> somehow Vaughn's getting involved here <laughs> Celine Devon <laughs> we need to stop we need to get out of this no thing. let's keep going <laughs> make it worse dig in it deeper <laughs> Celine Devon uh, Indusher and Avocado <laughs> John and Way are listening to this like why did we put these guys on this feed <laughs> yeah well after the match Los Lotharios run out Humberto Carrillo and Ooh. Gaza run out to attack Axiom and Scripps okay I actually do know who these people were because they were here in NXT yeah and now they're back question mark that, yeah what's their names they're their, I their think team? It's, it's uh, Los Lotharios. Right. So last time I seen these guys, they were like lover boys. Yeah, they, they kiss women. 
Nice. I like this gimmick. Yeah. <laughs> what a gimmick. What's your gimmick, guys? Kiss, Kiss moving. moving. Nice. All right. Yeah. Uh, I'm pleased to see these guys back. I uh, I think both are being really underused on the main roster. I think Gaza especially. When when he had that, you know, cruiserweight title run, he had his matches with, like, Leo Rush and stuff. This is... In NXT. Uh, Humberto? Gaza. Sorry. Yeah, because both of them had different runs. In it. Yeah. Um, both of them weren't there for very long. No, and I, I think Gaza might have moved up too soon or at least they moved him up without really any plan i think the guy's really good and they uh, moved him up and they called him dale gas dale gas <laughs> that's inverto no <laughs> i just remember the one guy's gimmick was lover boy and then like he it, it's like a sammy guevara situation where like they showed him what uh got yo so gaza like got engaged yeah on he proposed, nxt he proposed to his girl and then, yeah. like the next week he's just kissing yeah i was like <laughs> wait what i just saw you propose and yeah. now you're what okay i mean hey it's, you know it's 2023 but yeah uh but no happy to see these guys back um they then announced some more matches for uh gold rush next week we're getting the north american championship tyler Bate versus wesley with mustafa ali as the special ref and then the week after, we'll have Thea Hale versus Tiffany Stratton for the NXT Women's Championship. All right. Are you ready? For what? It's Operation Free Tony D. <laughs> Hashtag Free Tony. Yeah. Wow, we're trying to break him out, guys. We see stacks in what, like a, a trilby hat <sighs> This here. is like a... <laughs> He's got his, his board with all the potential uh, rats. Yeah, this is uh, this is more Goodfellas meets CSI, some type of cop show, Bit film noir, voiceover yeah, yeah. kind of thing. Stacks really, really get in thrown in. Mode. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> he's got his board with. He's trying to figure out who you know. Uh, the like the guy? red string connecting everything <laughs> together, and I'm thinking of the Charlie Day meme. <laughs> yeah. So he's looking at basically Tony's entire like history history of rivals. So you've got. Stacks, you know, bless him because he's like got this whole board sorted out here as if like us crazy wrestling fans, he's doing this for us. He's like, who, who could it be? You know, Tony's pissed off a lot of people. And then it shows like a lot of the history. It shows Legato and it shows them and his little stick posting note for them is name change question mark. I love that because it's like, because <laughs> now they're going by LWR. Yeah, yeah. It's like, oh, they've gone into like witness Hiding. protection and changed their name. <laughs> changed their name? They could be guilty. The same with Petey Poppins. Petey Poppins, aka Butch. Yeah. <laughs> I love throwbacks like that. It's the little things. It's, uh, remember when um, uh, Tyler Bre Breezango did the fashion files? Yeah, they always so similar, have these yeah. little Easter eggs. Yeah, which yeah. I think this is a scene you could probably go back and find some other things. I Very don't want funny. to see more of it. But he's basically saying, look, it's got to be Gallus. Because as Stan and Deliver, they knew we would win. So they had Joe Coffee come out to cost us. And then Battleground, we were going to win the championship then. But Tony got arrested. The Don got pinched. <laughs> Don got pinched. So we need to get Tony out so we can win those championships. We've got to take the head off the rat. And the rest will follow. He goes, that rat, that rat bastard. Ugh. And he like stops himself from saying bastard. I laugh so hard. He says, Don wants me to figure it out because I am the underboss. And if I want the big C, I got to make some big moves. Yes, yeah, so I want the big C. I got to make some big moves. Yeah, classic mob boss type movie shit here. I still, all right, I'm starting to think he's, he's a bit too in on this now for it to be him. But if know. it's not Gallus. Like, I feel Gallus. You can't just be Gallus. I mean, why? You just... Because well, that's, like... Too obvious. easy? Yeah. Yeah, what if Stax... Like, what does Stax gain out of this? If anything, like, he... He lost an opportunity to get gold, so they shouldn't be Stax. That's, like, some TNA booking, if it's actually yeah. Stax. Oh, yeah, yeah. Like, you're, you're right. Like, it can't be him now, because it's like, well, that would just he's be He's just silly. making these videos. Yeah, he's he insane. Tony's <laughs> watching Peacock. So he's, yeah, he knows Tony's he's got... Just really... Oh, you know what? He did say that, though. Oh, you have Peacock, eh? Yeah. Okay, cool. I'll make sure you think I'm innocent. But then, like, he doesn't have people to join or team up with. Like, I, I know he's with AEW, but, like, and I might be the only person to pop for it. But if it was two dimes coming. Yeah. Back, like, I'd love it. Yeah. Let's jump back, kid. Swim back. You're alive. You're, you didn't you didn't die in those waters. Did, wait, what was, that said something about uh, What's his name? Cole Carter. Pretty. Yeah. Pretty deadly. Didn't it? he say like, oh, they can apparently swim. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 Pretty deadly. They learned how to swim. 
Yeah, this is pretty funny. Stacks has been great. I, I kind of want two dimes back now. I yeah. just don't know who else it could be. Like, there's no other Italians in this show, is there? Champ is on the other, uh, main event. Uh. Yeah. <laughs> I was going to say, if it's not two dimes, if it's someone above two dimes, it'd be top dollar, wouldn't it? <laughs> well, yeah, more yeah, than two yeah, dimes. Yeah. yeah, please. I don't want them back. Uh, I, I don't know. I don't know. I genuinely can't figure it out, and it'll probably be something. So it'll just be Dallas being like, "Yeah, we we called the cops." Yeah, <laughs> we you you tried to murder pretty deadly, yeah, so yeah. we called the cops. We didn't want that to happen. To us. <laughs> Sorry, I, yeah, we're, you're the bad people. Yeah, <laughs> but bless bless that. Uh, Lash Legend has that beef with him as well. Could be could be Noam. Uh, Noam being like, "Hey, didn't didn't that guy murder your producer?" And that's how he no, no I'm dark that's how he got lashed on to join the metaphor i don't know i don't know who who is it who's behind us let us know was in the room yeah everyone just wants two yeah, dimes back Cole carter Paul carter. Paul carter yeah what's he doing where's trey baxter at <laughs> he's champ isn't he where's is he yeah he's, he's GCW, gcw champ, champ. oh yeah. man it was meant to be a like an all women's match for the championship and he cashed in it's like nah <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah. oh maybe i gotta give gcw another chance <laughs> he was it's been the on the up ever since rick flair <laughs> <Chris Bump. laughs> gave him the old rub oh, that was one of my favorite moments of in last wrestling <laughs> rick flair's retired rick out of his damn mind out of it he thought it was triple h or something <laughs> like, He's like, what? Trey back. He thought, yeah, he thought that guy was Triple H. Yeah, yeah. You know, get him confused all the time. <laughs> if you don't know what we're talking about, Ric Flair's retirement match, after the match, when Ric Flair is completely, like, Fuck. just, like, not there. He admits to doing everything you've ever heard him say. Do. Yeah, he's, yeah. He's like, everything they say about me is true. Yeah, he like, says that, and then, like, you think he's leaving, and he's, like, hugging Undertaker, Mick Foley, whoever the fuck's sitting in the front row. Yeah. And then he looks, and you see him looking at someone, he's like, no, you. And then he's the guy comes over. He's about to exit, turns back. And he's like, bump. I got to fist bump this. I, I want to shake your hand. <laughs> <laughs> Goes over and fist bumps. Trey fucking back. What's, what's his name? Uh, Christ Blake Christian. Blake Christian. And ever since then, that, now look at him. Trey Baxter. Champion. Yeah. Uh, we see Chase U. Duke tells Thea that he is proud of her. He says, you've done great. You've been training with Drew and Dempsey. You won the Battle Royal. You beat Cora. And now you're going to be the youngest NXT Women's Champion in history. You know what, Thea? Next week, I'm going to have a Chase U pep rally. And this is where Tiffany Stratton walks in insults her basically calls her immature and a child and she's not coming anywhere close to this title and drew and dempsey walk in and they're pretty pissed at duke and they say look not only is this pep rally nonsense she needs to train and see as thea says look i'll go back to the gym tonight i'm gonna train with you guys lock it hard. in lock it in lock it in so yeah uh pep rally next week will mr chase be at the pep rally I hope so. We need to have him back here. He's got to be there for the title match, doesn't he? He's got to support her. Yeah. Yeah. We go to our next match. It's tag team partner versus tag team partner. Friend v. Friend. Malik Blade versus Idris Anofe. Shout out tag teams who come out to Get face along. each other and come out at the same entrance. Yeah, I love that. <laughs> it's pretty fun. Love that. Uh, Tank and Hank come out to watch. So did our, our boys. And so did Brooks and Jensen. Yeah. Brooks. Briggs, Briggs and Jensen. You're doing, what, you're doing what I do, yeah. Briggs and Jensen. Um, the match starts very fast-paced right away. Both are trading roll-ups. Malik goes for a sunset flip to the floor, which I'm like, dude, like, if you hit this, you're, like, destroying your tag partner here. Uh, but it is blocked. There's then a big conhilo from Malik, and then a superplex from uh, Anofi off the top, but Malik shifts his weight and gets the pin. So Malik Blake... Blade pins Idris Anofe. Yeah, uh, pretty fast. Like, this had to be, like, really quick. Only a few minutes here. But they, like, were doing such fast things. Like, Idris, one of the big spots is he goes for, like, a huge tope con. But Malik goes in the ring. So Idris just hits nothing. No water in the pool to the outside, allowing Malik then to hit him with the huge tope suicida. So, like, it was really fast for a few minutes. And pretty fun having the two teams on each side, like, cheering for the guys. Yeah. The crowd were kind of split. The crowd, like, I'm, I'm assuming this NXT crowd, 
majority of these people go every week yeah. and these hardcore fans sit there through the level up taping sit there through every episode of nxt malik and idris have been like the the sleeper tag team for a while they've been awesome and don't get enough tv I mean, time or recognition right from the beginning of the 2.0 yeah true yeah yeah and have like we've seen a, even before that i think if i remember malik was i remember just being like jobber roles yeah kind of thing. exactly um like for what it was it was it was great my only critique is it's only like two minutes long whereas i yeah. i really wish it let them have a bit more yeah like the tank and hank match they had the other week didn't need to go any longer because that was kind of rough yeah but this like these two I would have definitely liked to have seen a bit more from i i really like these two like malik comes across as like maybe the better wrestler but idris definitely stepped up here but yep. idris comes across he comes out like macho man with the cape and everything yeah. like i don't know i like them as a team so i was was for once watching this like okay let's see what happens here because i don't want this to happen and it didn't it didn't after the match idris gets on the mic and says i know when your birthday is it's april 21st i love you yeah and they hug and then booker gets up and he's like yeah that was a beautiful moment <laughs> beautiful moment but you know what next week guys uh you're gonna face the, the, the three of you teams are going to face. It's going to be a hotly contested triple threat match. And you know what happens? The winner will face Gallus. The week after that. Yeah. At Gold Rush. Booker were kind of stumbling over a little bit here. Yeah. He, he made it sound like, oh, I have this announcement I'm supposed to yeah. give. It's, it's not just like, hold on a second. Hold on. <laughs> Booker T's got something Stop to say. <laughs> and then they will just start to fight, which seemed a bit random. They all start to fight. And then uh, Humberto and... Uh, uh gaza garza are just watching on the perch perch. so and then they're interviewed it seemed that yeah it did seem a little like all of these guys are like friends and i think it was more like a sportsmanly like yeah let's just like i swear they gave more time to booker talking than the match which i'm just i'm just down on i actually think malik and idris as a team so i'm happy they didn't do the turn here could go forward because they've actually been very impressive i i think they should be champions i think they should win yeah i yeah, I think it should be the... I feel we've had Brooks, Jensen, Gallus a couple of times. So I think... Sorry, Briggs and Jensen. Yeah, yeah. I feel uh, Idris and Malik. And this whole story has been kind of building up to these two finally having their match against each other. So I think they make sense. And them versus Gallus could be could be good. Mm-hmm. Uh, so Kelly Kincaid comes out. That's her name, right? Yep, yep. Comes out on the perch and asks Gaza and Humberto what they're doing here. They basically say there's a lot of talent here and they want to get involved in the tag division. So Booker just says, hey, there's going to be a triple threat. And then these guys are like, oh, triple threat, huh? I guess we'll watch because we're not in it. But like, shouldn't they just be added to it? Then? I mean, if if Blade and uh, Anofi beat Gallus, although yeah. like yeah. Tony D and Dax still need that match eventually, don't they? Yeah, I true. Guess. Yeah. yeah. Um, but yeah, I'm happy to see them back. Yeah. Uh, we go to Damon Kemp who is outside the referee's locker room and he's complaining about all the dodgy finishes. And yeah, he's got a gripe. Like, especially today, it's like, I saw zombie ref stop a match earlier. Yeah. He, where, where was he for me? He's showing his phone like, hey, look, this was last week. My foot was on the rope. So Eddie Thorpe comes out and he's like, huh, you still complaining about refs? <laughs> he looks like uh, he looks like he works at Drum, you know, Eddie Thorpe here. He's, he's got, got a big hoop earring. He looks like a bartender we know. Yeah, we see often. Yeah, I know exactly what you mean. No one else is going to know what you mean, but I know what you mean. He's wearing a hoop, big hoop earring. Yeah, this guy's wearing a hoop earring while Damon Kemp's got a jerry curl going on. He looks like the the boy, the evil boyfriend in Coming to America with this haircut. I kind of love both these looks, but I know the match might not hit the way I want it to. But. Uh, so Thorpe says, look, you keep complaining. So you know what? You get the rematch, and you can have any match you want. Whoa, any match? Eddie, you've not been here long enough, Daniel pal. Kemp is a, a specialist in the ambulance. Yes. Match. Is that what we're getting? <laughs> yes, at? that's what I was thinking. <laughs> yeah, like, we. I mean, he lost that match. He did, but yeah. Foley lost, like, every Hell in a Cell he was in. And it's, <laughs> so it's did match. Yeah. <laughs> So, Damon Kemp versus Eddie Thorpe in an ambulance match. Mm. They did not announce this. We're, no. ju- we're just joking. No, what, what do you think it could be? <laughs> uh two out of three falls uh something to do with wrestling right or no dq no rope break cage i don't know no mines then well, fight pit fight pit yeah, i don't know we haven't got one of those in a while but mm. yeah I don't, I don't know the yeah. feud the feud isn't big enough for like 
Five pits not big enough. Like yeah. two out of three falls, I guess, makes more sense because it's like like we need definitive winners. Yeah. Uh, maybe he asked for Mustafa Ali to be special guest ref. <laughs> no, he's the best ref. Yeah, we need business. Mustafa. In yeah. This. yeah. Uh, so yeah, we'll we'll probably find out next week what that's going to be. We get a video for Blair Davenport where she's walking around uh, the car park, the parking lot, and like I mean, she could go to prison as well. All the evidence is here. She's, she's like literally explained. See this spot? See this? This is where I fucked up Nikita Lyons. And then it goes. You see this? Yeah. Fucked up Wendy Chu here. This is an art attack. <laughs> this is an art attack. The overhead map. Blair attack. Yeah. yeah, the Blair attack. It's showing all the like geo maps in the parking lot of where she attacked people. This is so funny. So uh, she's saying that this is the parking lot where she destroyed the future. This is like, the parking NXT lot. is where the future's meant to be. Well, I destroyed them all. Uh, Wendy Chu is a locker room leader, but now she can just lead from home. And Roxanne Perez, you were saved. This time, but you better beware. Beware Blair. of Blair. <laughs> and that takes us to our next match. Roxanne Perez versus Tatum Paxley. Tatum aligning herself with Blair Davenport in the in the Battle Royal last week. Yeah, she, she didn't become a witch, so she became with the witch outcast. Mm. I thought the Blair thing was so goofy. I think that's such a, a step back from, like, why would you have her, like, it's like one of those talk shows, I've, it, like Ali G. Mm. <laughs> like, did it here <laughs> also did it here it's like she's crouching down posing you see right here i did it i think that just kind of took away a bit of like you pulled the carpet away the, I, I didn't i didn't mind it i just I, kind of i instantly am like ah, i don't find you as serious now i thought she sounded good i thought she sounded pretty confident and uh yeah i i didn't i didn't mind it at all and just recapping kind of this feud and how basically roxanne is the one that she hasn't been able to attack is what she I, is so down. she should have just attacked her here you, mm. this the video should have been like a dupe where roxanne's like well she's not here she's in a video and then she gets attacked but instead we got the match so we get roxanne perez versus tatum paxley uh rox hits a tilt wall head scissors uh paxley hit a few kind of innovative moves in this match hitting a like a draping vertical suplex and then a full nelson into a face buster for a two count um uh roxanne then hits the springboard luthez and a tope suicida and eventually rolls up Paxley for the win. Um, at the end of the match, Paxley is still kind of on the mat. She seems to be gra- clasping at her face. Not sure if it was just selling because Rox had to still cut a promo so she couldn't get right out of the ring or maybe a possible injury. But the ref was with her at the end there. Yeah, I wasn't sure. The, the finish seemed a bit wonky there with the like the ref not wanting to count and then counts and then kind of talking to her yeah. and then. I don't know if he was like, yo, get out of the ring. And she's like, I can't or I I, I don't know. So I hope she, there is no injury there or if she, if it is just something minor. But then Roxanne kind of cutting a promo and they really zoomed in on her face. Mm. So I was not sure what was going on. So again, again not much of a match here. I think I, I kind of liked uh, some of the things Tatum did. Like she she kind of did a few moves I haven't really seen before. But uh, again, a little bit of mistiming and stuff in this one, I thought. Um, yeah, I agree. After the match, Roxanne gets on the mic and says, Blair Davenport, you've been lurking in the shadows and taking out our women's roster, striking fear. But look in my eyes. I am not afraid. And I will hurt you just like you hurt the women. And that's not a threat. That's a promise. Yeah, uh, an okay promo. I mean, it's good for Roxanne to get out of just being the smiling yeah. young girl because that's just been her character. So we need something else and like justify this girl, this other girl Blair's attacking people. So she's angry. So cool. I want more of this. Yeah, uh, Roxanne, I I really like, but I am kind of over the smiling. I've just wanted to be doing this since I was a kid, uh, I'm and a kid. I took the bus to Booker's school, and yeah. even during the Cora feud, she didn't sound quite as worked up as this it was more like oh i'm sad that was my best friend so i I like that she had a bit more of an edge now yeah and i like tatum paxley still uh, even though i I wasn't too big into this match i think there's something there eventually down the line she's going for the she looks kind of like a witch now she's she's more goth since she's with blair yeah gothic charisma we go backstage to Gigi dolan who is mad about kiana uh kiana james eliminating her last week and she says like i would have rather just eliminated myself than have her eliminate me uh. and fallon henley's there and she's like yeah she's a bitch like <laughs> i hate her as well and she's a snake and just be careful with kiana james 
And Gigi's like, yeah, that is why you don't mess with a reject. So Gigi finding kind of a friend there in, in Fallon. Don't mess with the reject. Yeah. Uh, we then see these two little Latino kids at a sandwich shop. <laughs> They're in front of a... a, a... Oh, I, I've done my research. It's La Caribina in okay. Kissimmee. It's about a 30-minute drive from the yeah, PC. Kissimmee, down in the Florida area, they do film a lot there. That's like near Disney and all that. It's got a 4.3 uh, rating. And apparently, if you want to... Mondongo soup, which you can't really find at many places. What's a Mondongo? They've got a great Mondongo soup here. Mandingo uh, soup? Yeah. Um, so I mean, some it, people thought the food was okay. You're uh, reading the Google Chicken reviews? was a little bland. Was it Cuban sandwiches? What's the uh, place like, called? Yeah, it's, uh, it's La something. Carabina. It's oh, like, La Carabina. Yeah, it's Latin food. Okay, nice. Small but big taste, always friendly service, never failed us in a decade. These kids look like they're having a nice time. eating. Sand- it was like almost like the Sopranos, where they sat outside the... The sandwich shop it's like a front for like where they hang out uh one here says the uh the ladies who cook are heart emoji <laughs> you gotta visit so that's why these kids like it Kissimmee. so yeah we see these kind of two kids eating sandwiches and then we see them like today and it's <laughs> they grow up <laughs> they grow up and it's lucian price and bronco nema and they say the streets are what we call home and lucian got me and that's all i need and NXT ain't ready for us. Nice. So, so new team coming soon. New team. Lucian Price. They look kind of big lads. They look a bit bigger. Yeah, a little look, could be a little scary. I like it. Uh, not familiar with them. I know Detective John Ceno on Shot in the Dark has mentioned them a few times because he watches Level Up and is familiar with some of their work beforehand. But yeah, new faces. And they're going for a sandwich shop. Uh, I don't like this is just showing they're, they've been friends for a long time. Yeah sort of thing so yeah. all right we'll see what happens um yeah do you uh what do you think of the name bronco sorry what's their names again lucian price lucian i don't price. mind that one and bronco nema yeah it's all right in in a year two years we'll be like ah it's just who they That's are bronco bronco nema bronco bronco and, b tank and lucian lucian price Price. Nice. All right. Uh, we get confirmation that next week we're getting Dana Brooke versus Cora Jade. Nice. Excellent. And we go to our main event. Are you ready? Burn the ships. It's Baron Corbin. Just when you thought, hey, you know, Baron Corbin, your gear last week looked really weak. Look, j- your gear last week was just so shit. How can we make it worse? All right. All right. What if I, what if I change my shorts? So they're now red and a little shorter. A little than the ones smaller. Maybe a size smaller than what I normally wear in, I don't know, like blood red. Yeah. Boxing shorts, short shorts. And then I'll wear a shirt that says burn the ships. But then 30 seconds into the match, I'm going to get my shirt ripped off. So all I'm wearing are these shitty little boots and these shitty little red shorts to, oh no, I don't know how. But once again, Baron Corbin's belly button has found me. I thought I had escaped Baron Corbin's belly button, but here it is, just staring at me. You're not supposed to look into the trap, Ray, but I'm looking into this belly button. It's in the abyss. I feel it's, like, very easy and, like, the thing to do to just shit on Baron Corbin. It has been, like, forever, you know? Because he's shit. But when you come out looking like this, how, (laughs) like... I don't get it. I know I did this bit last week as well, but I just... Why? Why are you dressed like Why this? would you go out on His TV? His music is still that same... The music is ridiculous. Like Ocean's Eleven ripoff, I don't... Happy Corbin, Vegas thing, and then he comes out dressed like a boxer? Question mark? I know he's got boxing history, It, it but... looks like he's going to the gym. You know, this is just gym attire. Like, yeah, an old ripped up band t-shirt and some shorts, and you're, you're going to do some... A bit on the treadmill and lift some weights. It's a main event on but the USA Network. You're, this is meant to be the guy we're going to buy as a challenger for Carmelo. Um, weird. Just so bizarre. Like, this guy brings no real heat. Any Like, it's not even X-Pac heat. It's just like, man, you're just, like, just so boring. I don't, I, it's, it's, the look, literally, you got, you, you de- degraded from last, like, you, you got worse from last week. Now I can just, I'm just staring at your belly button, calling me. 
help me. That's what I'm saying. I can't focus on the match. This thing's just winking at me all day. Yeah. This, this guy must be trolling if this is what he came out dressed as. I'm going to NXT. This is my gear. This guy has more money than me and you combined probably ever. And this is how he dresses. Is this, this is how him he chooses night towing it? I hope he dresses nice in real life. I think he does. We've seen him like pictures of him at, you know, weddings and things like that. Where I hope so. Look nice. I hope so. This was He's got a nice smile on him. This he, guy, like, he... no, that's his belly button. It's just smiling at me, <laughs> calling. Yeah, I'm gonna be looks more in shock. Than <laughs> I'm, gonna, smiling. I'm gonna be in bed tonight. I'm gonna hear it calling out to me. Baron Corbin's belly button. <laughs> Oh, this poor fucking guy. I, you know what? Like, bless him. Like, he's he's turned lemon. He's turned chicken shit into chicken salad. Like, he's someone who stuck around and fought it out through WWE, and you got to give him credit for that. But like, at no point what have I watched a match from his or watched even like prom like the nothing from him has ever been good for me to watch. And here he is still main eventing on TV. So bless him, I guess. Depressed Corbin was. <laughs> like that's that fight <laughs> yeah i guess before he got happy before he won that money when he like grew his like deliberately looked like shit grew, when as he opposed to just looking stubble you yeah, know like, when he was just down on his luck yeah the press corps yeah, yeah he lost his house and everything like a big show did in 2013 <laughs> like Shawn michaels <laughs> fuck man yeah so i'm sorry baron um i'm sorry for us we had to watch this so uh, he's taking on Ilya Dragunov. <laughs> There's a big... Hey, let's take everyone's favorite fucking most intense badass wrestler and take him, verse him against everyone's least favorite. Great idea. There's a big boot from Ilya and then a big chop from Corbin. And that, therefore Dragunov rips Corbin's shirt off and starts delivering chops back to him. There's clotheslines from Corbin. Dragunov goes for a hat trick of Germans, but Corbin blocks the third one. Uh, there's the Constantine special from Ilya. And after the break, we see that Corbin is attacking the ribs of Ilya. Obviously, last week, uh, Dragunov being speared by Bron. So yeah, it's like the ribs, the lower back area. He's got it all taped up. There's a choke slam on the apron. Corbin sends Dragunov face first into the apron and then hits this choke slam backbreaker for a two count. Uh, Corbin then delivers a Death Valley driver for a two count. And then just these big punches to the ribs, followed by a huge deep six. I do think he hits this move pretty nicely. Uh, give credit where it's due. The deep, the, the deep six. The deep six. Uh, Dragonoff then counters the end of days, hits a chop, his leaping big boot, leaping in Zaguri, high knee in the corner, followed by the bombs away knee drop and the senton from Dragonoff. Uh, there's another choke slam attempt from Corbin, which Dragonoff counters into a DDT. And then hits this like deadlift vertical suplex on Corbin, which is pretty impressive it's considering big the, the size difference. Looked great. And then his falling knockout blow forearm to the face uh, sets up for Torpedo Moscow when Breaker runs in, goes for the spear, but Ilya hits him with the Torpedo Moscow, but unfortunately turns into the end of days <sighs> from Corbin. And Corbin wins, making him the number one contender for the NXT Championship. So the guy everyone hates beats the guy everyone loves. Yeah. And everyone's big mad. Uh, I, you, you saw this coming because Corbin, sorry, Corbin attacking Mello, that instantly set up that match. Mm. You knew that was the match we're going to. And we were just hoping it wasn't going to be the Great American Bash. And we now know it's not. So cool. We'll get over this and hopefully move away from Big Bad Baron. But it makes more sense for Braun to cost Ilya because yeah. I suppose Ilya is going to cost Braun next week. Yeah, and you're going to want to keep both these guys somewhat protected, yeah. and then you do Ilya Braun at the bash, right? I or Braun Ilya the following week. You think that soon? When is Maybe. Great American Bash? That's July. Like it's a little, still a ways I away. I feel that seems like a big pay per view match, unless you go. I think so. Unless you go a triple threat like Braun Ilya and Carmelo. Because, uh, like, um, eventually you do want Ilya versus Mello, but then, like, you'd, I don't know, you'd have Ilya beat him, essentially. But, uh, yeah, July, I think that's why maybe a three way. July 30th is Great American well, Bash. That's quite a There's way. no way that match yeah. is waiting until then. It's probably in two weeks. Yeah. So, well, the, this one matches mm, in two weeks. Baron versus. Oh, ba you, you think they add Ilya and Bron at. Yeah. 
Gold Rush? Night two, the in two weeks. Yeah. Hmm. I'd hold it off a little bit longer than that. You could. Because you've already playing. got like it kind of stacked Ilya, the show and Ilya, it's something like this deserves to main event it really. It, it's the bigger match, honestly. Whereas this Baron is, Corbin. they've already said this is the main event, Corbin and yeah. Mello. I don't know, but I guess so we'll I see. think it'll be in a few weeks. Um the match was fine. Like Corbin isn't the most exciting wrestler in the world. I thought I, I kind of wanted them to I thought his chops actually sounded pretty good himself. So I kind of wish they just lent more into that because we know we enjoy those chop fests with Ilya. Um, but yeah, uh, kind of went how we thought it would with Bron at the end. Uh, afterwards, Carmelo Hayes runs out, hits his springboard clothesline and nothing but net on Corbin and stands tall as NXT goes off the air. Yeah, okay. So we're getting Bron versus Melo. We're getting Bron versus Seth. And then Bron... No, we're getting... Corbin versus Mello. Corbin versus Mello. Sorry. Bron versus. Seth. I'm just in denial, man. Yeah. Uh, so that's that's the big matchup. Like aside from Baron Corbin, like the the next two weeks of NXT, like I said, should be really good, and there there will definitely be some matches that come out of that that stand out and that are worth tuning into NXT next week. This week, however, I wasn't too into the wrestling. No, I wasn't me, too into. I, I thought everyone was stuff. slightly off today. Something was a bit off. There wasn't a match of the night. Really, I guess the opening match, maybe the main event. Really, I, I, nothing really hit for me the way NXT usually has been in the past little while. NXT's had one or two sleeper matches that you're like, oh man, that was worth checking out. This week, nothing too much. Some stories advanced, so that is a positive. I won't just be a negative Nancy and say like they advanced uh, Wes and that whole thing. Like, hey, what's gonna happen? Having us question is something gonna happen. That's always good. Having Ilya and Braun feud while Braun is also calling out wwe champion seth so sorry wwe world heavyweight champion seth rollins so like there is inner twisting stories and things like that that has me like hyped for certain things but the wrestling and stuff didn't hit tonight i think i think we've seen this a lot in nxt and wrestling in general when you've got a bigger show coming up the next week it is a bit of a lull yeah. the week before lol uh, i am looking forward to the next two weeks I, I think they sound interesting but yeah i the night really didn't really connect with me. No, but I, again, the next few weeks, they're definitely hyping it up like something big, calling it the gold rush. They're hyping up Shawn Michaels' Twitter. I love how they're like going to break and Vic's like, did you just see what Shawn tweeted? And yeah. then they go to break and don't know what it is. So you got to go check what Shawn tweeted. We did. We did check. Didn't and we? then he's like, hey, there's a gold rush. Gold rush. Uh, so, <laughs> so that was NXT this week. Uh, we'll find out maybe some revelations who put tony d who snitched who's the rat hmm. is it stacks stacks the rat there's a lot going on i don't know i don't know is vaughn and robert stone gonna you know be okay this seems like it they're getting there aren't they yeah so you, Do know, you think they know each other's birthday probably yeah. they know each other's favorite ice cream flavors that is true that Stashio. is true uh, well, that's what we thought. Let's see what you guys thought. We always put up a feedback thread on our Poison Rana Facebook group. Go ahead and join if you haven't already. Yes. And we start off with Magan, who says, If there's anyone that gets me to care about a Baron Corbin match, it's Ilya Dragunov. As expected, Corbin got the title shot, but Ilya was protected very well because of Braun Breaker's meddling. I bet the Tsar returns the favor for Gold Rush as Seth fucking Rollins stops by to defend his world title against Braun. Mustafa Ali has an, has an agenda by making himself the special referee for the North American title match. The opening six-man tag was dope. Fraser and Dragon Lee got some new friends against the metaphor, and Noam Dar was forced to watch lose his Heritage Cup. It's been months since Angel Garza and Humberto Carrillo were on TV, and they'll add more depth to the tag team ranks. Roxy showed a lot more poise on the mic. It's going to be a loaded two weeks. Sidebar, Corbin looks so basic. Thank you, Megan. And we go to Fire Frank, who says, It's always been you. Yes, referring to Big Bad, Big Bad Vaughn. He also says, Shout out Detective Stax and Corbin's belly button Aww. and casual wear red shorts. Hashtag burn the ships. Burn the ships. He still he didn't get back to you, uh, Baron. He no, didn't reply. Him again. Yeah, I sent him another tweet. Just hey pal, just wondering. <laughs> type it right yeah. what I say. <laughs> hey pal. Just wondering, what does hashtag burn the ships mean? Big fan. <laughs> hey, pal. We'll just keep doing this until he replies. 
tell me something, brother. <laughs> no, let me tell you something, brother. Uh, well, burn the ships, guys. Uh, we hope you enjoyed us talking and rambling on about tonight's NXT. And uh, we'll be back next Tuesday night to talk all about some gold rush. Yes. Night one. So there you go. And if you haven't already, tickets are moving really fast for Forbidden Poor happening June 25th at Real Sports, right by Scotiabank Arena. Oh boy. And yeah, it's it's gonna be it's gonna be fantastic. We've got some things we can announce as well. We do. Look, we got Forbidden Poor announced next weekend. And I know a lot of our listeners, postmarks, NXT friends, poison pals, whatever you want to call your, our friends and people out there, there's so many listeners and friends coming in for Forbidden Door Weekend and specifically Forbidden Poor. Yes, it's going to be so much fun. We're going to be hanging out all day before Forbidden Door at Real Sports upstairs. And we're going to be doing a bit of uh, some games. We're going to have Fire Frank defend the champion. We looked up. We did the history. Fire Frank has been champion longer than Bruno San Martino. <laughs> uh, no, not quite. Not quite yet. He's getting there, though. He's beat CM Punk. He's, he, yeah, he's beaten CM Punk. Uh, Roman Reigns is just about to take over from Pedro Pedros. Morales. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Frank, I think, is about seventh in the rankings so wow. far. Damn. So he's longer than Ganya. I don't know. Longer than Nash, yeah. That was a long run, wasn't it? Yeah. So Fire Frank's putting the title on the line. And for anyone coming to Forbidden Poor, you could potentially walk out as BDE champion. You could indeed. You could walk out with a replica title belt. You could walk out with some other great prizes and some giveaways and some fun things that we got going on and some fun things planned. John and Way are going to do a pre-show podcast. I'm sure we'll all be part of that with Q&A and it'll be a whole lot of fun with some special friends and everything, everything being there. But we also have now a little bit of a sponsorship. We do. Yeah. What? As this is, uh, you know, Japan versus North America, the Forbidden world. Door. Yeah, we've teamed up with Suntory Whiskey. That's right. We make some lovely Japanese whiskey. For good times. Make it Suntory times. I've handed over the, the cocktail making reins to them, and they've come up with some pretty nice cocktails. And if this is a, a reason for you to get there listen, early, listen carefully. Don't, avoid, don't, don't go to all the other festivities going on. Come to us early because. The first 50, 50 people, roughly, through the door to Forbidden Poor that day will be getting a free Rainmaker cocktail. What? Yes. Thank you, Suntory Whiskey, who yes. will be there with some other giveaways and freebies and some fun stuff. It's, uh, this sounds beautiful. Like the this is going to be a summery day, and it's Suntory Toki with elderflower liqueur, pear juice, lemon juice, sugar, and a garnish of star anise. It sounds beautiful. It's going to be, and you get one free if you come early. Flip a coin every time you take a sip. Also, if you if you don't want any of that Japanese muck, I'm joking. There are sponsors. I'm joking. Yeah, no, but if, if you want to keep it Canadian, yeah, you can have the Judas effect. Ooh, yeah. What's in that? It's it's like a a whiskey sour, but with a a bit of a a cherry a cherry liqueur going on. I, I like love it. cherry, so I like whiskey a cherry sours. whiskey sour. Uh, sounds beautiful. Yeah, this is crazy. We've been talking with Centauri for a little bit. Uh, shout out our friend Bri, who kind of linked us with them. And they were like, what? You're doing a Japanese wrestling event right beside it? Like, please, we would love to. So they've uh, basically offered to give some people some free drinks. It's awesome. So they've been, they're really excited for it. Real Sports seem really excited about this event. Um, come and if you can only make it to the after show, tickets will be, uh, are still available right now. Uh, go to postwrestling.com slash live. Uh, the venue have pretty much said, hey, if you're partying and having fun and drinking and spending money, we'll stay open with you. Yeah. Uh, so, yeah. Yeah, so before Forbidden Door and after. With the Forbidden Poor, afterwards we're doing wrestling karaoke. So if you're a singer, get ready to sing some, or just come and watch the performances. You want a bit of avocado and <laughs> in the share. Some share. Yeah. yeah, that's right. Uh, it's going to be a lot of fun, and it's coming up really quickly. It's, it's only like a week and so left. It's ne it's not this weekend, but it's next weekend. So, yeah, if you're planning on coming and you don't have a ticket, don't hit us up the day of. Is there room? Is there room? I will not answer your message. No. <laughs> that happens way too often. Yeah, we're we're busy. Like it's it's busy. I'm gonna be we a can... few sun. I'm gonna be a few Judas effects. Believe in... it or not, as well, we sound very very confident people a lot of the time doing these things. 
these days can be stressful yeah. as well. Like we've we're we're planning, you know, we've got our our games we're doing, a live podcast. We want to make sure everything's running smoothly. Yeah, just get your tickets now. Don't stress it out on the day. We want to yeah. have fun with you guys. It's going to be a lot of fun. Wear your wrestling shirts, bring your titles, do all the fun stuff. It's going to be a whole party, all day of wrestling. If you're coming into Toronto next week for Forbidden Door, we're going to be around town. We're probably going to Collision as well on the Saturday. We're going to have a whole gang of friends. It's going to be absolutely insane. So uh, visit the Six if you're if you're in town. You might even see a drunk John Pollock. <laughs> Possibly. Possibly, doubtful but it's possible he'll be on his best behavior hey, with the whiskey going on he does he does like his whiskey guy okay, that guy's a character that yeah. guy gets out of control they're not doing a, a post show no sunday night they're coming to party with you fine people so that's a rarity that's part of the draw is john oh, away yeah. not going home to record they're just coming out to hang and party so you know brandon from new jersey is going to take advantage of that get these guys a little silly oh yeah shots on brandon shots on brandon <laughs> Uh, Brandon from New Jersey said he might bring us some Four loco. I'm okay. I'm, I'm it was my right. suggestion. Right. I knew you wouldn't be into that. Are you still 12? Like <laughs> you drink those? You, if you drank that when you were 12, you'd die. Uh, so for Ben Port, next weekend, there won't be Four loco there, but there will be all other drinks, including some of these other drinks that we will have. You should see the menu of fun stuff and some food and all this fun stuff. So yeah, we're pretty. We we won't give them all away now, but pretty pleased with some of the names we come up for for these food items as well. Yeah, so pretty, uh, pretty fun. Let us know if you're coming to Toronto. We can't wait to see you find people. But uh, yeah, that's it for for here on up next again go follow us at poison rana pod twitter instagram and search poison rana in your podcast app for audio of that mercedes martinez interview ahead of her match against masha slamovich uh at girls next door go get your tickets at smash dash wrestling.com uh and then check out all the other shows like i said our suicide squad review is up on our patreon we have a was next another retro nxt looking at tyson kidd and baron corbin Kofi Kingston and Xavier Woods feuding with Rusev. Yeah. Uh, all, the, all the fun stuff from 2014 NXT. We have a free review of The Batman. We'd love your feedback on that. That'll be a lengthy podcast coming out this week on the free feed. Shot in the Dark, of course. Just so many, so many podcasts coming out. And then somehow, someway, we'll be doing shows on Forbidden Door Weekend. Somehow. We'll be busy, but I we'll do I guess we will be, won't we? Somehow, yeah. someway, yeah. we'll figure it out. Always lots and lots of content. So yes. give us a, well, a follow. The yeah. least you can do. Just... Just support us. Hit this like button on YouTube. Every little Even thing. Even though the audio cut out for a bit. Still like it. I don't know. Still if... give it five out of five. If yeah. That's can, you, can you give ratings on Spotify? If you can, give us a rating. If you're listening on Apple, give us a nice little review. All the little things can go such a long way. Uh, and we appreciate anyone spending their time with us here today. I myself, Brain Harrington. You can find me Twitter, Instagram. I am at the Bray D. And I am at Davey Portman. That's it. That's all. Take care. Goodbye. Be safe. And burn the ships. Oh, hoy! Poison Rana.